I received an inquiry about how to deal with making a uh, textured surface down this curved face. If you can tell, that's curved on a constant radius. And these are getting a little bit thin in the middle because, you know, we're trying to pattern these along a linear path and it's getting a little bit uh, difficult there. So I'm going to post a link to the question in the description of this video. We've had amazing, awesome answers and feedback from Nate Liquid Gravity, Stepa Libre, and uh, Harold L. so far. I'd like to think that because they did the most straightforward, pragmatic, and probably best solutions, I think I might have some liberty to exercise some uh, some of my creative muscles and see if I can solve this issue in a little bit more of a non-standard approach. So let's go ahead and do that. The person was also asking, you know, at the end they have some uh, of their pattern left over and I'll show that here. So as you can tell what our user has done here is they've had a bunch of uh, items left over and it's it's pretty heavy with big patterns like this to try to go through and select one by one and remove face. So one alternative that I might suggest is to remove model pieces. We're going to just select everything and maybe I'll do that by selecting faces here. So I'll go and select all my faces and then I can click to deselect the big lumps that I want and now in much shorter time we've been able to uh, just delete all of the bodies that we don't want and then we're just left to clean up a few faces right that's one quicker way to uh, delete uh, extra bodies that we don't want but let's do an approach that we don't have to delete these bodies at all really so let's roll the tree back so right about here And that's where we make our very first revolution. So I'm going to delete everything after this to avoid confusion. Excellent. And what we've done here so far is we've made an extrusion and then we've cut the top so that this is a curved face now. We'll use our, we, we chambered, right? We created a plane that will be the basis of where we revolve. And then we've revolved that axis. One thing that I'm going to change is I'm going to go into these chamfers and I'm going to make these oversized, 0.65. We will end up with the correct uh, dimension chamfer at the end. But I think what we're going to do with these chamfers is pretty awesome. So stay tuned because uh, I think oversizing these a little bit and then getting them to the correct size solves a whole lot of problems as we go along. Next, we uh, make our plane. That's good. But before we make our revolution, uh, I'm going to offset some faces. Right? We're going to offset here, here, and here. And then, yeah, probably about, that's great. I'm going to apply that. We're going to go to this bottom here. And in the interest of time, I'll skip constraining this. But in any serious project, it is best practice to constrain. And we're going to create an extrusion there that unites all of these. And then we'll go to our surfaces. And I'm going to delete face on the bottom here, right? Next, I'll make a sketch on this plane, and we're going to project this arc line, the one that, that uh, was used to cut that curved face, and we'll project that with maintained association. I fill that in, and we'll extrude, right? So I'm just making a solid version of this. Next, I can roll the tree forward to our uh, revolution here. It looks like it's catching the wrong axis, so let me... We'll edit the sketch here. A 
Okay. Okay, I'll go hide my surface. There we go. So there we have our first little offset there, but we'll want to edit this. What I'll do is delete the lines that were used to constrain this. And I can see my sketches of where I want to place this. So it looks like I'm free to move this around. And we'll move it just on the outside of our boundary here. Again, fully constrain that in a serious project. I'll show my surface just to check that with the surface. You know what? It's actually a bit higher, isn't it? So I'm glad I did that. We'll uh, move this revolution a little bit more. Right there. Okay, now we can do our pattern. call the spacing about 0.2 and let's see what 50 brings us it's about right we could probably drop that down actually yeah about I'll go with 49 and we'll say okay All right and then we'll want to pattern this down the face now Nate liquid graph pointed out a, a, a great point that this is a constant radius. If we had something that was elliptical, we could use a pattern on path or a path pattern to do this. Uh, but since we have something that is a constant radius, I have the luxury of selecting an axis, choosing this face, and applying. And then we'll go with the circular pattern here, there and there. And we choose the axis for our pattern center and that keeps us pretty consistent we'll go with our angle as being point 0.15 ish and then let's throw something like 45 instances out and see what that brings us and uh, we'll need a bit more than that <laughs> so I'll up this to maybe 60, and that ought to do it. All right, great. And feel free to remove some instances if you want to optimize rebuild performance a little bit better, but we'll go ahead and accept that. And uh, now comes the fun and interesting part. And before I go further, I also might point out uh, there might be a center ball here that is also patterned with everything else. In the interest of time, I won't be redundant and go through that. Watch uh, Harold L's video. It is a really fantastic method of putting that center ball in there and patterning it with everything else. Uh, so if I call this what I want so far, then I'll go to surface and I'll trim my model according to the surface that I've generated. And uh, let's actually reverse that so that we have our arrows pointing outwards, and we'll accept that. And now I can hide my surface. So the fun part is we had our oversized chamfers. So let's go ahead and uh, go to our model, and we'll remove our chamfers that are oversized.
And so this is my last face here. What are we actually doing when we uh, remove this? Well, we have all these broken round elements of our texture. And when I remove this face, see, yeah, as you can see, a bunch of our round elements are actually healed in addition to removing this face. So when a huge amount of these are healed, then we've been able to eliminate all of the round elements that are extra, heal a good portion of them that uh, were broken by that split operation. So we're gonna say okay and accept all that. Next, I can reapply my uh, chamfer to the right size, which is gonna be 0.55. And as these come in, you can see that the number of elements adjust as needed uh, to the uh, chamfer that we have. And so as you can tell, we have a little bit of extra meat that was introduced because we lowered our chamfer value. So if this is a problem, all right, just change your chamfer value up here, and then uh, you'll have less open gaps like this. Uh, then it's just up to cleaning up an edge, right? We'll do remove face on some of the balls that didn't quite heal. And uh, we should be good to go. No need to remove any extra external bodies. Just a quick edge clean and we're good. So that is uh, another method that we can use to uh, <laughs> make this part. Uh, hopefully that's helpful in some way. Hope you enjoyed it. And thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the Libre channel.